you able to see my screen? Yes. I do. Okay. Then now let's get started with the sales process. So we've covered everything in procurement. And now since now we are talking about sales. So the first thing is we need to talk about customer creation. The process is exactly as the vendor creation. And now we will be doing it for the sales side. So hopefully we don't have to go into that much details in the accounts payable. We have purchase orders and vendors. Similarly, in the accounts receivable, we have customers and we have the sales orders. Also in the sales and marketing module, we have on the customers we have the quotations and the sales orders the sales agreements and rest of the things that we need to do so we'll first go on to the customer and we'll try to create a customer now and this page is exactly similar to the creation of vendor so the same thing so we can go and create a new customer so the customer account is already populated a reason because we have the number sequence set up for that so if you look on uh, look into the accounts receivable and uh, set up and the receivable uh, parameters in the sequence we'll find the number sequence we'll find uh, customer account if we have a quick look at the number sequence code so we've defined it in this way. So C and then a hyphen followed by alphanumeric uh, till the five digits. And we have to make sure that it is continuous. So once you do that, now you don't have to specify the name of customer and account number again and again. And this is what every uh, in every implementation companies do because this is something that should be automatically generated just like purchase order sequence or sales order sequence. So We'll click on new. We already have three generated or two generated with that. So the next number is 003. So now we can type the name. For example, let me say many random names, seven C's. Customer group, exactly like vendor group, we have to define customer group. It's a mandatory field. And you can see it's marked in red also. So the same thing. You can have uh, every company can have a uh, various, uh, you know, a list of uh, customers, the way in which uh, those customers are segregated. For example, right now we have wholesale customers, major customers, retail customers, other customers, maybe a good category might be the export customers, import customers, you know, some sort of uh, those things. And all of these customer groups are going to have. So if you want them to group accordingly uh, with respect to the terms of payment, then it's a good idea to have a separate group for them. So this is exactly like, you know, uh, the vendor groups. So, so similarly, we have customer groups. So where we can group the customers, you know, if they, they fall into the same category. So anyway, so we'll select a random customer group here. So let me select a customer group as wholesale customers once we do that uh, similarly we can specify the addresses here so i hope you all are familiar with what i'm doing right now okay because i'm not going to into every detail i've ex explained what zip code postal code how you can edit these all right so let me since the region is selected as ind so it will pre-populate it these things let me just click on save or you can click on save and open and if you have a drop down here then you'll see open a sales order then a sales order will be added so this is our customer page so guys everything is similar with respect you know just like vendor so we have addresses here so we added one address we can add multiple addresses the way which you, in which we added you know uh, for the vendor so any kind of uh, queries or any kind of doubts in this section because this is like a repetition of what we did in a vendor card nelson krishna like uh, you guys family i hope you guys are familiar with what i'm doing right now yeah yeah, yeah. actually yeah i work on this also in office so okay okay so totally yeah. fine yeah. nelson about you i'm good okay okay so i don't have to create these again and again so similarly we have these addresses here 
So actually the sales process is like pretty much reverse of the purchase process. So if you really know what is going in a purchase process, moreover, you really like know what's on the sales side. Similarly, we can have the contact information where you can add emails and addresses and fax and that sort of information. We can have miscellaneous details. Just as we had the purchase order defaults, similarly, we have the sales order defaults. Uh, how do we add a person for an email? Like uh, if there is a person for an email contact, so is there? So this is the question that Nelson asked. So we have contacts with here. So we can add all those contacts and the details of these contacts. So we can add the contact person and also we can add the contact information for that particular contact here. So this you will find in the contacts. Similarly for the vendors also, we have these contacts, okay? So you can have as many contact persons as you want uh, for this particular customer all right okay okay so this yeah. is this is the place where you'll find uh, that you need you'll find ways to add contacts and the contact information email everything can be added here so similarly uh, as i was talking about uh, we have uh, the purchase order defaults we have the sales order defaults so uh, if you want that there is always a particular warehouse and site from where the sales order has been placed so you, you can add that site and warehouse so if there are some charges groups that you want to be applied so those charges groups can be applied here so this charge group is nothing like it is very much like the uh, order charges um, you know automatic charges so you can specify the charges group here we'll talk about this in upcoming lectures also like how to add various uh, types of auto charges We've already discussed a little bit about auto charges, but still uh, there is a way, for example, you don't want to add auto charge entry for everything. Now let me explain you, uh, for example, accounts receivable. These are the auto charges. So right now, if I click on new, okay. So it's a kind of a header charge. So instead of defining a particular, you know, a particular, a customer or in the process of uh, purchase a particular vendor, I want to define a group. So what is this group? So this group, then we'll have to define several groups. So then we'll add, so this, this is one group, okay? Customer charge group number one, let it be. So if we define, you know, we'll select this group, then if I click on save, let me say a charge code of freight a value of 20. So right now I'm not defining this for a particular customer. I'm in accounts receivable. So we'll be talking about the, so this, these are the auto charges for the, uh, for the customer and not the vendor, but we are defining it for a certain group and the group is zero one. So once you click this, so now what will happen is, it's defined for the group, but how will that group be related? So this is the way. So you tag the group onto a particular customer, then this particular customer will become a member of this charge group. And we added in the auto charges that anyone belonging from this charge group should get uh, an auto charge. So this is how uh, these charge groups are functioning. Are you guys getting an idea of what I did just now? I do. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So this is like uh, the charge group. Similarly, whenever we'll, uh, so table group and all, all means for everyone. Table means for a specific customer or a specific vendor or a specific item. And whenever we'll, uh, we'll try to post anything and uh, like try to create a header or a line using the group, it means uh, now somewhere we are going to tag these groups. So similarly, these are all, so all of these things are very simple. Whenever it is coming item, customer group, commission group, sales group. So group means like there is a way where we are going to specify groups and then we are going to specify the postings by tagging that group. And finally, we are going to tag the customers, vendors or items with that group. Similarly, the line discount group, multi-line discount group, when we'll talk about <clears throat> trade agreements, then we'll talk about those. So this is just to get you an idea. So in this way, like you guys can, you know, you can just add all the sales order defaults. So in this way, once the sales order defaults are added, so, so there is line discount rebate group and all of these total discount and all. So you can add the sales order groups here. You can add the 
uh, you can add the payment defaults. This VM seems to be running slow. What is the sales order pool functionality? Hey guys, are you able to hear me now? Oh uh, yes. I'm really sorry, you know, yep. this I just don't know why this is happening again and again. There's really an issue here. So just connected with my mobile now. So I hope uh, I think it should not disturb us for the rest of this. We'll quickly share my screen now. Okay, but I think it's breaking in the middle of your voice. Uh, is it still breaking? Now it's fine, but sometimes it just goes mute in town. Okay, okay. Uh, you know, uh, the Wi-Fi is actually not working. There is some issue with transmission. So right now I'm just like, you know, connecting with the mobile. So, and yeah, you know, yeah. mobile bandwidth is all. Yeah, busy. hotspot. Yeah. Yeah, hotspot. So uh, where we were, so, yeah, lost. Nelson was uh, asking about the sales order 
pool sales order pool yeah we have yeah. sales order pool sales order pool we have sales order pools also if you want to you know group your sales orders into various pools for example the default order the internet or the wholesale it's just like a grouping and for reporting purpose so if you want to do that uh, so you can do that also uh, most of the customers like you know they always want any every kind of sales order to be tagged on onto a, you know onto a specific order pool so that they can know what okay so from what what type of uh, what sort of category is our sales order coming from so you can have your sales order pools for that purpose so basically it is very good for reporting purpose so whenever you want to you know print the reports or you want to make a customized okay. report so on that for that purpose like you can use uh, these things there are actually tons of features uh, available here so you know so i was just talking about similarly we can have we've already gone through this in november so we can have terms of payment methods of payment you know it's very much like the opposite of vendor card with all those things present so i think i think there is no issue i think we can i can we can wrap up this customer creation and move on to the sales process right so this is uh, okay now let's uh, let us move on to the sales order where our sales process will start so this is like we've created a customer that is fine so if we navigate to the sales and marketing so now we'll find uh, we have various uh, you know orders we have the sales quotations that we'll talk about in upcoming session we have sales agreements very much like purchase agreements about that also we'll talk about but for now the main uh, process order to cash cycle as we call it in procurement we say it it's procure to pay so so any kind of idea nelson and smriti so what is a typical order to cash cycle like could you explain me if you have a bit of an idea about that yeah uh, i think uh, order to cash process starts with first entering a sales order then uh, okay. printing a pay slip then uh, it goes to uh, shipment then confirming the shipment during the uh, shipment confirmation then the inventory gets deducted uh, right uh, yeah and then finally invoice and then hitting the uh, gl final all right so yeah that is typical um, like order to cash cycle so what we'll do is uh, we already had our item and uh, that so we'll we'll try to sell that item now so we'll go through the processes of first we'll try to confirm the sales order it will generate us a confirmation document or the sales order confirmation report so that is very much like purchase order confirmation report but then sales, yeah, sales order, order acknowledgement then, yes uh, sales order confirmation so that that is needed you know uh, important formal document let me select our customer that we just created we'll select the customer and these are auto populated based on the default settings for that customer we'll click on so here we have the various uh, things you know uh, you can have the pool you can have the sales taker you want to tag a user the sales person responsible so right now it is picking up everything uh, as per my id all right so i'll click on okay so the first step will be adding the line so just like in a purchase order we have the header view which have all these settings that directly affect uh, the sales order so set up address delivery in each and all of these things and then we have the line view where we will specify the lines and also the line details where we can override the final values of all the lines so if i so i think this was our item which i think we brought in inventory now we are going to sell this so we have okay so right now in the product search it is showing us that we have few quantity available i think we have available for this one and also for this one we'll select this one and click add lines and close didn't get selected properly let me okay so once we added our line item then we how much quantity you want to sell let me say i want to sell a quantity of uh, let me say the uh, 
the sales price you could have specified the sales price on the item card and here we can see that we already specified a sales price so the sales price was specified here in item number and if we go to the sales tab we specified the sales price here also guys one more important thing to note is like this is not the only price that you can specify you can have various prices these other things so uh, that uh, that you can uh, that can be taken care of uh, with the res with respect to uh, if you navigate to the manage costs and you can click on the item price so there you can specify various costing versions and various ways or various costing types for example right now if i click this is somewhat an advanced topic we really don't need to do this but you know costing type can be defined as the cost of the item or the purchase price of the item or the sales price of the item for example i'd want to define uh, the sales price costing version is something uh, which you want to keep track of your various costs for example one financial year can have one costing version so standard cost and planned cost are the two types of costs. So current fiscal year, new fiscal year, or next fiscal year. So basically, this is like versioning. You are you are versioning the various costs. So in costing and pricing is a very detailed topic, but still we'll we'll touch on that a little bit. So right now, for let me say, if I select any version, version ten, it's it's for the current fiscal year. Okay, the standard cost. So version has some of these things for example uh, you want to just group them uh, for example this financial year i was having uh, this particular cost for this particular item the next financial year yeah, i just want to revisit my cost so maybe i'll create a separate costing version for that recording will tell you what type of prices are allowed the purchase price is allowed the costing price is allowed sales price is not allowed here so it will uh, not it will not allow us to do that Okay, so this is what a costing version is. It will keep track of your prices. So costing version 10, let me try to specify. Is it the... your basic costing or like, you know, if based on, if you don't give anything at the general, uh, I mean, trade agreement yes. level, this is the pricing that standard cost, okay. Yes, so this is basically you are defining the prices. You can define the prices, you can override the price. It is, it's very much like right now I want to define the sales price. So I'm defining a sales price for this particular item, for this item that I've created. And according to this version, I'm going to define it. So, and for any particular site, if you want to define it. So because all of these, you know, if, if and but scenarios cannot be taken care of all of these scenarios. So I have various ways of defining uh, this price right now. I am not, it's not a kind of agreement or a trade agreement because I'm not defining it for a particular customer or a group of customers, right? But I want yeah. certain prices uh, to be defined for the item and we can have a number of prices. So all of those things cannot be taken care of with this just one field. Okay. Okay. So this is one thing like instead of defining it here, so the correct prices will be picked up from here as, as well, because when you go uh, uh, deep into the costing and pricing, you definitely need these features. So right now, for example, purchase price, I want to define it for a particular version. I want to define it and for a particular site, I want to define it. Now, how you will define it onto the item card? You won't be able to do that. But here you can do it. Okay, so this was, you know, uh, uh, just to give you a hint that guys, we have something called uh, this is like a uh, full, uh, a very detailed process where you can specify exactly what you want for what particular version, from what particular date you want those prices to be active or you want them to be, uh, you know, blocked or what. So all of these things are <clears throat> readily available. So if I click on sales price, if I let me select a costing version, if I select, let me say for site 11, we are preparing okay and uh, so not found okay site 11 okay site one that was warehouse 11 the price so uh, costing is another uh, topic that we will discuss in detail i mean in another uh, module. costing uh, there uh, like uh, costing uh, with uh, i just wanted to say that costing is a very detailed topic so we are anyway discussing the pre uh, the in agreements the pricing and costing are already discussed there 
so yeah definitely we'll be having a separate uh, you know session dedicated for all the prices the discounts and various other things yeah. related to costing also during the production order how to estimate the costs and all we'll be discussing yeah bombs that. and right so we will like continue like we'll keep adding on to that whenever the costing is required so right now we are talking about costing in production order we'll be talking about costing in trade agreements pricing and costing so yeah there will be place it's like an uh, an add on in every module so it just lingers on so yeah i just remembered okay so this is something guys that you should know you know uh, this is where you can specify all of these things uh, so let me uh, let me make it active from okay any date so i'll click on save and then these are the pending prices and you can see the error price type sales price is not allowed in costing version 10 guys why because in costing version if you look at this properly uh, recording and this was not enabled right so you can restrict so this is the costing version you can actually restrict okay this costing version can have only these prices so if i click on save now i can use this costing version and i can define it so once you click on save and now there is something called activate prices so these are the pending prices and when you click on activate they will shift from pending prices to active prices here so if i click on to the activate prices now they will vanish from here and these are the active prices that we have so in this way on all the various scenarios from various types of things for example for multiple sites we can have uh, different uh, prices so basically we can make use of these versions uh, during production order estimation that you want to estimate okay uh, using what costing version using this costing version then this price will be picked up on what site on this particular site so there are uh, you know various times where we want uh, these uh, these sort of pricings and costings to come into action so i just wanted to touch base on that that we have uh, you know this uh, separate uh form for filling the costing and pricing and almost every type of costing pricing scenario can be taken care of so right now we have a sales price for this version and for this costing okay so i guess this thing is clear to you guys that we can specify the pricing and costing here also yeah there are some details but we can continue okay sure so yeah you'll you'll get familiar with this as soon as we you know and talk about production order cost testing mission and all so once we have specified the price and also you can see uh, hold on so once you specify this 80000 and you can see this uh, this automatically gets updated to 80000 okay so now we can move on to create a sales order we already created one let me try to edit that customer account was let me filter it with customer name so we already have so we already have this okay so the same status is right now here it's open order which means still the transactions are remaining open so we'll see how this status changes <clears throat> it changes to invoice it changes to received uh, not received um, delivered the uh, received is in the purchase order so anyway uh, we have specified uh, 10 quantity that is all so now we'll click on if you want to make additional changes to the lines you can do that uh, or you can just click on confirm so that as to confirm the sales order and this will generate a sales order confirmation document so we want to confirm it okay can click on confirmation showing us a warning you are not going to print anyway i'm really not going to print this one i don't have printer attached right now to this machine so once this order is confirmed so you can see we have sales order confirmation and correspondingly we'll have a sales order confirmation report which is the formal document for official sales order confirmation
also this is a report which every customer will uh, you know will ask us consultants to modify because they'll be having their own template their own design so purchase order confirmation purchase invoice purchase product receipt sales order confirmation sales invoice sales packing slip these are the reports which are almost every time modified by every customer so yeah keep that thing in mind so let me try to see if it is able to print yeah it's processing sales order confirm report Okay, so this is the sales order confirmation report. It's pretty much standard and very much simple. <clears throat> I think even the Dynamics AX community knows that this is anyway going to be modified with some good amount of logos and some formatting. But this is like the official sales order confirmation document, okay? So once we've done that, now let me say it's time to pick the goods and ship the goods. So, advanced picking and shipping we will discuss it into in the warehouse management when we'll be you know configuring the warehouse for proper picking and work will be generated for proper shipping and confirmation of shipment but for now let us uh, suppose that this is once the sales order is confirmed now the user will go and pick the items so that process so we were registering it in a purchase scenario and here what we are going to do is as we can already see that registration is disabled and picking is enabled so we are going to pick that particular item so i'll add a picking line okay so and just want to make sure to show you the inventory status as of now so when you when you add a purchase order line it will show you ordered so right So you can always have a look at the uh, line and go to the inventory and transactions. So it is showing you right now on order means uh, the inventory of 10 for this particular item is like after some time, this will go out of inventory. In case of purchase, it would have been ordered during the purchase order confirmation, okay? So this is a place where where a consultant should definitely look whenever there is a kind of a scenario and when he or she is confused of exactly what is going on with the particular sales order line. So once you do that, now it is the time to pick the items and create a packing slip. I'll click on pick. I'll click on order line and then uh, now it's asking us so okay so you want to pick a certain quantity let me say i really don't want to pick 10 out of 10 uh, right now i just want to uh, ship a five quantity that is it you can click on picked quantity as five also we'll have to specify the batch number and location is already there so let me see if this is the correct location so batch numbers and location let me try to remove this one let me see the available inventory so on hand range so view available so these are all the available inventories so we can see available physical here we can pick from these locations and range inventory dimensions means if you click on this one it will filter out rest of the details so according to the location 11 it will filter out so a1 is having 47 and this is having uh, 1030 we, we can pick from either one of them so we we have two batches we created two batches and we received it multiple times therefore we have this inventory i just want uh, a2 i'll click on a2 here i can manually type 11 or again you can click on to the locations and type the on hand so anyway it will give you it was already showing you location 11. So this is how this is the main thing from where the user is picking so at this time user is actually picking the items 
and uh, you know taking those items to the truck or any kind of vehicle where you know uh, like you so that you know inventory is going to be picked up from this stage so i'll click on confirm pick all once this is confirmed as you can see we have one order line if we had picked everything then uh, this line would have been not there okay only picked but right now it is showing us the inventory transactions said okay there was a total of 10 so on order still is five and picked is five so we have picked on the five so let me say so this time we are only going to one uh, question uh, can you yes. go straight to the location instead of uh going through warehouse and batch and after that location yeah definitely we can go to the location not an issue and i'll click on this one so you can definitely go on to the location you don't need to like this will be auto populated that will not be an issue so like but you, uh, in the end it is giving you all the options maybe you don't want to pick from a particular warehouse for a particular order also also, there is uh, one common scenario. You don't want to, you know, go through all this process. You want the inventory to be reserved automatically. So that is again a scenario. So for that particular thing, what we do is um, usually that is the most common scenario. What this is, I was just trying to explain you uh, because as a consultant, you should know the exact step when what exactly is going on. Otherwise, you can uh, manually, for example, if I click this one, uh, let me click yes uh, yes so one very common scenario is uh, uh, the users you know they just want as soon as you create a sales order it should get it should it should be reserved so for that you have to enable the automatic inventory reservation and the system will automatically reserve as soon as you just add the order line so right now you can see that there is no reservation enabled here but all of these values will be auto updated and a reservation will happen so once you do that, so you don't have to, you know, manually go and do all sort of those things. Okay. So reservation is also one important thing. And uh, that that setting is present in accounts receivable. If you navigate to the account receivable parameters, I think this is the place where that setting is located. Reservation is just a soft committing, right? It's not a hard right. commit. Yes, yeah. and that too you can have if you have advanced warehouse management. So you can have whether you want to reserve the batch or you want to reserve the location first. So that is something we'll talk in warehouse management, which is called a reservation hierarchy. So what do you want to reserve? So there are the two main uh, settings, the batch before location, the batch above location or batch below location. Sometimes you just want to reserve the batch and maybe you want to uh, later on reserve the location uh, for that particular batch. So the batch number will be reserved. Or sometimes you want to reserve only the location, but you are not like yet committing what a batch number you want to. So yeah, there is a lot of things that goes in reservation. So I think we have that setting here in inventory, reservation in six orders. sales order reservation is manual so if we click on reservation automatic so automatically those lines will be reserved so system will instruct you okay go and you know so this is the thing you need to do but right now i wanted you to walk through this process so that you know like each and every step of what goes on or you know so i think the process of pick is yeah. so you right. can just click on pick and this is how you you are picking the items once you have done the pick, so you can click on to the pick uh, post packing slip. So this will actually generate a packing slip now. Also, before that, we should have a look at, you know, inventory. Always, always, you know, uh, uh, try to look at the transactions of inventory. So you'll get a good idea. So right now, so that one line is splits into two. The line is saying minus five quantity is picked. So in sales, everything will come in negative side because the inventory is anyway going out. So on order is still minus five. So it's picked now. So once that picking is done, also there is one more thing. Uh, we have that uh, batch number here. So we were, you know, uh, manually picking it. If you don't have batch number only site and warehouse, you can directly click on post packing slip. Exactly like purchase order. 
you can directly click on the product received if you don't uh, uh, want to perform these additional steps for the item which are not having a batch number or serial number then you don't have to manually you can directly click on post pa uh, post product receipt similarly you can directly click on post packing slip so you can see confirmation is like same both sales orders and purchase order that registration process and purchase order is you know is here we have a picking process and that product receipt there is right now here we have post packing slip so they are all like you know uh, antonyms of each other so i want to post a packing slip for the quantity that i picked okay so if it is picked then only those lines and that quantity will be updated and filtered all right so once i do this now my packing slip will be generated and packing slip will be posted as well inventory is out of the system that to minus 5 inventory and here we have some errors let us see why order has not been sent to okay so again uh, there is some credit management setup enabled here order has been sent to credit management so credit management is another feature and uh, I, I think this is enabled by default let me see <clears throat> so it is like okay how much on how much credit uh, you know the maximum credit that uh, you can assign to a customer so that sort of uh, feature is enabled because of which it is it's not uh, like letting me to post the packing slip so credit management on hold list so i'll just you know i'll skip this uh, let me say uh, release this one uh, do not block it once that is done so packing slip from appears so that is a kind of setting that you you know it's a kind of feature if you want it to enable you can enable it for uh, specific uh, customers but right now we are not talking about that anyway so we were going to post the packing slip and uh, if i click okay here my packing slip will now be posted so you know you can see a lot of errors in dynamics 365 uh, they are self-explanatory even if you copy those errors and google it um, there will be like almost 10 to 20 responses and you you'll get the solution uh, it's very much simple so okay so now our packing slip is posted and let me see so once the packing slip is posted just as uh, we had a product receipt general in purchase we'll be having packing slip general here so this will give us of what exactly went out of inventory. So delivered is five. Ordered was 10, delivered is five. Similarly, we have, uh, you can view the report. It's a very simple report. Packing slip report can be viewed from here. And very, you know, in the very same way, we can correct the packing slip, we can cancel the packing slip. Cancel it just as we could correct the product receipt and we could cancel the product receipt. So if you want to correct it, maybe you want to uh, do a little bit of uh, like you want to sell some more or some less. If you want to, if you want to cancel it, the product, uh, the packing slip will be cancelled. Okay, so this is exactly same as product receipt. So once you do the packing slip, now it's time to do the invoice. I'll click on invoice so what you want to invoice well we want to invoice the quantity that is in the packing slip so right now it will filter the packing slips and since we've already only made one packing slip so this is uh, that particular packing slip number 279 if we had multiple packing slips here it would have showed us the multiple packing slips the line detail the packing slips and the sales orders everything uh, can be reconciled here finally for the accounts people they usually like to view the totals, what exactly is going and how much invoicing are we going to do and for what. So everything is right now here, so I'll click OK. So once we do that, I'll click on OK. So in this way, you know, um, we are doing the sales invoicing. So I'll click on OK. So you could see like we have uh, the process, we have the confirmation, then we are doing picking, then we are posting the packing slip, which means loading the uh, inventory onto some cargo. And then finally we are doing the invoice. So once the invoice is done, invoice general will be created. And there you can see the voucher entries also along with the uh, standard report. So this is also like usually customized, but anyway, Dynamics providing you this. 
so this is the sales invoice okay so we have uh, is not delivered because of a print man okay so we have some print management setup issues anyway it's not an issue you can just click on view on your side and you'll get that report just as we printed the sales order confirmation report so guys any kind of doubt in this uh, process because this is the like uh, the complete process of sales what exactly happens when you are having a customer order and finally to the final delivery and invoicing of that i think after running the process i'm i'm going to have some questions. yeah definitely uh, meanwhile meanwhile you know just try to run that process and let me let me you know finish the rest of this so i'll click on pick so five five inventory was yet left so you can pick it as many times as you want so i'll click on add picking line let me try let me try to i think the batch number was a2 okay let me say i want to this time i just want to ship these three so i'll click on confirm pick all still i have i will have the two on order so once we do that, let me try to post packing slip on picked. Okay. You can see the same process here. If I click on close here, if I don't click on close here, that two line that open that on order, that status uh, will remain intact. And because of which the matching will fail. So right now a deal has been done a deal has been made that okay so this is the final delivery that we are going to give you uh, we are not going to provide the rest of the two quantities maybe because we don't have or maybe because the um, vendor is saying okay just give us the eight quantities if i click on close then that transaction will vanish that on order transaction will vanish and the status also will get updated otherwise the status will also not get updated to delivered because uh, if you remember, I told you that status only gets updated when everything of a particular status is done. If all the lines are delivered, then only the status will convert to a delivered. Otherwise, it will it will not uh, be delivered. It will still be on order. So if I click on close and let me say, OK. So this is like, you know, short closing uh, the part, uh, the sales order. Very similarly, uh, we short closed uh, this one. I think that same issue under delivery. Okay, so now we have this under delivery issue because we haven't specified any under delivery. So we didn't specify on the item. So because of which it was not on the lines. So let me try to specify the under delivery. Mm, delivery and delivery, let me say, under delivery of 50% should do this. So once is I it do that, mandatory that we have to mention under delivery? Yep, it is mandatory because unless because see you have specified there is no under delivery here. So first in the uh, you know first uh, you have to you can specify it only one time on the item. So it is very much mandatory and that setting will be carried on to the order line. So you have to make sure that you specify otherwise it will not allow you under delivery okay. and over delivery because otherwise see how will the system know for example let us consider a scenario see right now uh, that if if you don't have that close button how will the system know whether like, i think everything is done with this order or yet uh, it is like some uh, some more process has to be done there should be a kind of boolean a check mark also okay. uh, the under delivery and over delivery is a, like it's some major issue for every company some of them are actually having pretty much strict rules that no under delivery no over delivery some of them are flexible for some items it's flexible for others it may be not so right now what i'm trying to do is uh, on the line i have specified that no under delivery is possible and i'm trying to short close the sales order because of which system is throwing error since you are already short closing it uh, please specify the under delivery whether you are allowed or not okay. so once i specify the under delivery percentage and uh, i think let me confirm this again it will generate a second revision of that document that okay uh, this time under delivery is also defined not an issue we can reconfirm it confirmation only means it will generate a snapshot of that document into the sales order confirmation 
So pick and pack, let me try to post the packing slip. Uh, picked and if I click on close, now it should not throw an error, but it will, it may throw an error of that credit posting. So we'll release that also. Okay, not an issue. This is done. So right now, now if we look at this line status will turn to delivered. This would have never changed its status to delivered if we, if we are not, you know, clicking on that um, close because then it is expecting, okay, two more quantities will uh, will be sold and then I will make this status delivered. So this is important. And second, uh, if you look at the transactions, now it will only show you, uh, it will not, show, it will show you sold, sold is the one uh, because of which uh, we did the invoice and this is deducted. Deducted means the packing slip is done. It is not showing you that uh, other, you know, other quantity of uh, quantity of two that on order. So this is also important. So if you if you need to short close something, so you will have to go through this process because then only accounting will be perfect and the inventory transactions will match. Oh, if you didn't close on that, uh, if you didn't click on that close, then another line would definitely show up here as uh, on order, which means, okay, maybe after some times you will sell the remaining two items as per the formal agreement of the sales order confirmation document. So is this process clear? Yes. Okay, so once you click on that sold, now we can do this invoicing of what we just uh, packed. So this is the new packing slip and if I just let me click on okay without editing any other information here. So this status was delivered and now it will convert itself into invoiced because now nothing is left to deliver. So the status was delivered. Now nothing is left to invoice because all whatever could have been delivered is delivered and all what uh, that was delivered is invoiced. So now if you look at the status, it will show you invoiced. So guys, this was all about the sales order process, the various transactions, under delivery, over delivery, and uh, you know the cycle which through which we process these orders. So I think uh, I think we've covered everything here. The charges we've already covered. Similarly, you know, just as you add the charges on uh, purchase order, similarly you can add the charges on sales order, maintain charges, allocate charges. I think we we had some charges here. Let me see. Some charge was posted. Maybe it was on the order line because I think we made kind of an auto charge. So just to see where the charges are. Let me see. Uh, maintain charges. Uh, okay, no charge, not an issue. So, you know, this is how the things take place. So any kind of doubts or questions will definitely will pick up it in the next session. And meanwhile, you know, just go through this process of creating a customer and creating a sales order and walking through all these various scenarios, try to pick up under delivery, over delivery, try to short close them, try to deliver or try to over deliver them and try to invoice them. You can invoice one packing slip, you can invoice multiple packing slips uh, in one go. So, you know, just feel free to explore these things and uh, let me know in next session. All right. Yeah, sure.